Let's look at how our children invent subtraction in problems such as this one. See? What'd you get? Okay. Okay, got that one. Anyone else? Okay, I'm hearing a lot of 18 and a lot of 11, and a lot of people are saying the answer is 9. So we have three more answers again. Does someone have something we don't have up here? All right, how many think it should be 18? How many think? How many think it should be 11? Two? How many think it should be 9? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10? I can prove it. I can prove it's 9. Okay. Gary, we'll let you try first. What do you think the answer is? See, you take the last answer. Oh, 9. Okay. See, you take, like I did last time, Take the six and the seven off the off the um um seventeen. Okay. And then um take off ten, and that will be ten. And take off seven more, and that will be three. And add the six back on, and that will be nine. Okay. So twenty take away ten was ten. You do. I can make it. What was your answer? Uh, it was 18. 18. All right, Eliz Elizabeth? I took 10 off the 20, mm -hmm. and that um, was 10. And I took 6 off the 7, and that was 0. And I, had, I took 1 off the um, 10, and that was 9. Mm -hmm. I can prove it's not even. Um, 20 and um, 10 is 10, and 6 and seven, six take away 7 is um, 1, and, and 10 and 1 is 11. This is a different answer. Stephen says 20 take away 10 is 10, and he says 6 take away 7 is 1, and 10 and 1 is 11. Disagree. 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 The explanation of the next child, Grace, is impossible to follow. But when children try to give an argument that will convince somebody else, this thinking in itself helps them learn arithmetic. You can't take tw 20. If you took 20 away from... Took, you had 20 and you took away 10. How could it be 11 because you're taking 10 away? I, I can tell him. See, I'm Stephen, gonna... you'd have to have 21 to take and take that 21 away with the um with the 10 and you'd be taking away 11. Uh, Grace, I mean, you don't disagree. You don't. I'll prove I mean, it's not. Nice. I'll prove it's not. Nice. Right. Stand up. All right, Grace. Alright, you see? Stand up. Me too. You see, 20, I, 10 take off from 20 is 10, right? And then add a 6 on it, 16. Minus 7, it's 9. I can't prove it's 9 too. I think everybody thinks it's 9, stand up. No, Stephen? What did you do? I know. I disagree with you. I know. Are you sure? 
All the children subtracted 10 from 21st. However, they dealt with the ones in three different ways. Elizabeth said that she could subtract only 6 from 6 and therefore had to subtract 1 from 10. Gary subtracted 7 from 10 and then added 6, but Chris added 6 to 10 and then subtracted 7. Stephen's answer of 11 is familiar to all teachers who have taught subtraction of this kind. Piaget said that if children make errors, they make them because they are intelligent and think. The teacher's job, therefore, is not to correct the children from the outside, but to create a situation in which children might correct themselves. Piaget's theory about the nature of logical mathematical knowledge convinces us that children are bound to arrive at truth if they argue long enough. This is why we bring out wrong answers and encourage children to exchange points of view. Whether they are right or wrong, children construct knowledge more solidly when they are encouraged to defend their ideas. If they become convinced that another idea is better, they will change their minds. This is why the teacher refrains from saying that an answer is correct or incorrect, and instead encourages children to agree or disagree with each other.